if you watched the live stream, you'd have seen how it took the whole three hours of it just to complete the tutorial. It was massive and left me feeling a bit overwhelmed, like I needed a tutorial for the tutorial. Before I started playing again, I looked on YouTube for some beginner's guide videos. There are lots of them, many of them well over an hour long. Experienced players have produced whole playlists of hours and hours worth of beginner's guide content. I started watching some of them, but I soon realised that I was going to be spending more time watching the videos than playing the game. So after getting a grasp of the basics and the what not to do's, I jumped into it. Choosing your starting position in Crusader Kings 3 is a daunting prospect. You're faced with two choices of time period, a number of different scenarios containing a couple of dozen different rulers, then you realise you can get an overview of the entire map which spans all of Europe, Russia, the Middle East, India, East Asia and North and Central Africa and pick literally any ruler, any count, duke or king in any territory to start with and your mind just melts. Fortunately the game helps you out a bit, there's recommended starting scenarios and each ruler has a difficulty attached so you can get a handle on how tough starting there will be. You can also continue from where the tutorial left off. I chose to start in the year 1066 playing Duke Vratislav, the Duke of Bohemia, a vassal of the Holy Roman Empire which has an easy rating attached to it. Once you've decided where to start, deciding what to do is equally as daunting. The game's objectives are completely player defined. It's good to have an idea of what your goals are so you can start making progress towards them. Otherwise, you just kind of find yourself bumbling along aimlessly. There's good examples on YouTube of campaign targets that players have set themselves, like starting as a duke in Italy with the goal of recreating the old Roman Empire or following in the footsteps of Alexander the Great. So having a long-term goal when you're picking your starting character and at the beginning of the game is, is quite useful. But short-term goals are just as if not more important. Everything you do, every decision you make can have so many variables and consequences. It's good to keep an immediate goal in mind to focus on how your actions work towards it. It's easy to forget that this is a game played over centuries, over dynasties of rulers. You don't need to do everything with your first character. Chances are you won't be able to anyway. The idea is to keep your house, your bloodline going from generation to generation, heir to heir, getting closer to your goal each time. Succession is one of the most important concepts in the game and one many guide videos devote a lot of time to. Once I got my head round this, I calmed down a bit. I stopped rushing and took things slower. Things can happen very fast sometimes. It can feel like the game is playing you. When I felt like this, I took a breath and slowed down and just worked on the little things. When there was a lot going on, I tried to stay focused on an immediate goal and I found that helped. Another concept to keep in mind is to not be afraid of making mistakes. You can't please everyone, you're not going to win every war you get into, not every scheme is going to work out favourably. So don't worry too much about losing wars or upsetting vassals, it's all part of the journey. There's only two things that can end the game. One, if your player character dies with no heir. And two, when the game reaches its end date of the year 1453. You've got plenty of time. Crusader Kings 3 is a massive grand strategy game with a huge amount of information and mechanics to get your head round. I didn't scratch the surface in my playtime over the week. The main thing I did learn was the slower I played, the better it felt. It's not about getting everything right on your first character or even your first playthrough. It's a game of dynasties. And how no one has ever made this into a Game of Thrones game, I don't know. It seems like it would be a perfect fit and I would love for someone to do it. So that's been my week on Crusader Kings 3. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments and join me on Monday for the live stream of my next entry in the 2022 Game Diary and Sunday at the end of the week for my final thoughts video on it. Like and subscribe and thanks for watching.